Um, we're doing a range of valuations. I work for a um, private consulting company, but we do most of our work for um, New South Wales and the Australian government um, clients. Um, so my responsibility is the health uh, work that, that we take on um, because I come from a health background. So I've been working in public health and health promotion research and evaluation for you know, 20 odd years. So it almost gets to that point where you don't want to <laughs> say how many years. Um, so I guess I'm um, bringing both the public health experience and uh, a broader evaluation experience from working in um, a company that is involved in a lot of different types of evaluation across a broad spectrum of government departments and things like that. So I think that's where I think I have, you know, I've got some interesting perspectives because of, of having seen kind of in a way both sides of the coin. Um, so the evaluations we do are <laughs> you know, client driven, so it ranges enormously from sort of fairly small work we do with non-government organisations to very large um, government um, programs that we're evaluating. Probably the most interesting um, piece of work I'm involved in at the moment is the national evaluation of the National Partnership Agreement on Preventive Health. So I don't know if you use that term here, preventive health, but it's become a term that we're using in Australia to describe, um, you know, prevention in the health area. So focusing on uh, anything to do with prevention. But this term has been coined particularly for this one partnership agreement uh, on preventive health. Um, it's part of a federal... Um, financial relations reform, so it's part of a broader political context in which the states and territories of Australia working together in partnership with, the Commonwealth, with each other and with the Commonwealth Government. So the interesting thing about that is that part of our remit in doing this evaluation is actually to assess how well the partnership approach worked. So previously every state and territory has been doing its own thing in terms of prevention, um, health promotion and the government, the national government's been sort of giving out money you know, for various programs and things. This is for the first time the states and territories and the Commonwealth government got together and said let's all work towards the same goals, let's focus in on the things that are priorities and all work together um, with the flexibility for the states and territories to do their own work in the way that suited their context and their environment and their needs, etc. So this is a kind of very unique um, piece of work that we're looking at. First of all, I should emphasise, because this is a bit of a um, pet topic of mine, is that we developed an evaluation framework um, to underpin this evaluation as the first step. So the Commonwealth Government commissioned that piece of work, um, the development of the framework. And we work very closely with stakeholders to develop a logic model. Um, and from the logic model, we've developed um, a comprehensive evaluation framework. So I think that's kind of the thing about um, the, all the work that I do, that we try to take this sort of um, systematic and analytical approach to every piece of work. So that definitely underpins this. And I think the really important thing was that we developed a logic model that was um, workshopped with all the stakeholders around the country and agreed, and the same with the framework. So we set out a set of evaluation questions and a methodology for undertaking this evaluation that was then agreed with all the stakeholders. I think this is what's happening in evaluation. What I've been finding is that the mainstream, not mainstream, the other parts of the system of government or um, work that's been done in policy and delivery of programs, you know, um, social services, environment, um, um, education, all those sorts of areas. The, the evaluation work that's been going on there is broader, broader and more highly developed, I think, than what we've been doing in health. And that's, I guess, one of the messages that, that I'm trying to sort of promote to people in health is that, that hey, there's a whole lot of stuff out there that people are doing that is really useful and really interesting. 
In my experience, I think it's because um, it's arisen from a public health research paradigm, so that we've we've come from a very much um, methods-based um, research thinking um, paradigm to de to develop evaluation in health. So that's where I think it's it's come out of that sort of history of doing public health research, and then health promotion has kind of yeah, picked up on the methods that are used to do public health research and adapted them to evaluation, but the, but and have kind of somehow stayed yeah within that paradigm and not drawn in from the other evaluation development that's been happening in a lot of other fields. So yeah, so for example, there is actually um, something on contribution analysis in the Scottish on the Scottish government website. So it's something that's being picked up. Um, there's a lot of things um, being adopted in evaluation re sort of recently um, across the board that is trying to address this problem of making sense of multiple sources of data and information. I think in health, in public health and health promotion, we've been sort of very narrowly focused on health behaviour outcomes in particular. So we've sort of um, yeah, been focusing on, on, you know, how do we measure that better and, and how do we find out if we've, we've changed it. Um, we haven't developed the methods and the, and the skills or and the experience of looking at what are both short-term, medium-term and long-term outcomes and what's the relationship between them and what information do we need to collect to tell the story about what's really happening. Um, I think we've been very focused on those measuring those longer term outcomes and maybe trying to do that well and probably do do that really well but it doesn't seem to be really helping in evaluation um, work I don't think because there's so much more information that's needed to tell the story about what's going on, what's worked, why it hasn't worked and I think we've really missed that opportunity in a way because we've been so focused on this sort of methods driven approach. Quite often the methods just completely drive the evaluation, so um, people working in public health evaluation often say, okay, so how are we going to evaluate this? Oh, well, let's do a survey, or well, we need a control group and a, you know, an intervention group, how are we going to go about getting them? And then sometimes there's absolutely no logic model and not, no evaluation questions or, or anything like that. It's really sort of narrow, I think, in its focus. So I think, um, you know, there's a real need for two things. One is to develop a broader, have a broader repertoire of techniques and approaches that, that we can use and that we can sort of um, use to help sort of really um, tell the stories and um, explain the findings. Um, but at the same time also focus on a core approach to evaluation um, involved, you know, which is you know, understanding the theory of change, um, developing logic models for programs, um, developing really clear evaluation questions and focusing your efforts on, on collecting all the information that's needed to, to understand um, whether your theory of change is right, what all the, um, whether the steps um, work in the way you expect them to work, what the contextual factors are as well. So I think that's something that is sometimes missing is this contextual information. And that's something we're also doing in that large national project is that we're collecting data from the key stakeholders on sort of six monthly basis as to what the contextual factors are that are impacting on the program and, and then rating those contextual factors as to how important, how much they've influenced the, out, the implementation and outcomes of their work. So I guess that's the sort of basic thing is look broader, see what's going on in other um, evaluation worlds, um, but at the same time strengthen sort of a core approach which is around, um, you know, focusing on, again, realist evaluation and logic models and theories of change and, yeah. I think in Australia the paradigm still for funded public health research is, is the same. Um, if you're applying for research funding, mm. then it's very much about, yeah, high, uh, RCTs, mm. or that least, you know, those experimental designs. Evaluations seem to be different. 
Um, we've people. Government and non-government organisations in Australia are investing in evaluation. Um, that's, it's becoming like absolutely um, the norm, you know, that you don't have a program and you don't invest in a program unless it's got an evaluation attached to it. You know, sometimes evaluation isn't really that well funded, um, but I think there's been a big push in government in Australia that all programs um, you know, are evaluated, and so that they're, they're, commission, they're often commissioned evaluations, often undertaken by universities, um, but they're not being vetted necessarily by some sort of um, high-level public health um, research group or group of academic you know, public health experts or anything like that. It's actually um, a much more pragmatic approach, so that, um, you know, universities do a lot of these evaluations as well, um, but they're funded by government or by non-government organisations who are looking to do evaluation. So that's the area that I'm in, is this, is this funded evaluation work. So maybe, yeah, there's a little bit more freedom there to, um, to use different methods. And it's quite acceptable, actually. I mean, I think in a lot of these cases, people are looking for any kind of information. You know, I mean, they just want some information, you know, about what's going on with the program. I mean, they don't care if it's an ICT, really. I mean, and I think the sort of qualitative approaches or um, any sort of all sorts of variety of information that can be collected in evaluation is valued. Um, not that we don't do RCTs. We still do RCTs. Um, we're doing one at the moment um, for an environmental um, evaluation where yeah people are randomised uh, to one or other of the intervention groups and we are doing an RCT and we frequently do quasi-experimental designs as well. So it's not that the designs aren't, you know, that there isn't some of that sort of quantitative, um, you know, gold standard design work. It's just that there's also a lot of other um, work that and, and methodology that's used to gather more information and to give a, a better understanding of, of what's going on. But equally, it's also okay, you know, to do, um, you know, a series of interviews with stakeholders to find out, you know, to answer a particular question. So I think it's also about the questions. You know, I think, I think the questions drive the methods and I guess that's what I would recommend is that we focus more on the questions that you want to answer, driving the methods, rather than just saying, we have to do this method. Well, what about, what's the question? And, and also, what's the purpose? Who's the audience? Who's going to use this? You know, what's the purpose of it? And that should be driving the methods more. I think this is one of the things that maybe we've done a disservice to ourselves because being so outcome focused, there's a gap in a way between, well, the outcomes, while important, are achieved <clears throat> through achieving usually uh, a series of other outcomes, whether you call them, you know, intermediate, immediate, or proximal, or whatever. There's there's a lot of things that have to happen before, you know, you increase physical activity behaviour in the population, for example. And I think what we've found is that um, there's a lot of missing information in the middle. And that's not unusual, I think, in most evaluations we do those sort of intermediate outcomes of things most difficult to find out about. Um, but there's a, just to tell you about, there's a, in New South Wales government, and I'm not sure how you know, commonly accepted is in other parts of the country, but particularly in New South Wales there's been an, a lot of attention to a thing called results-based accountability. Or it's a guy called Mark Friedman who comes from Santa Fe in Texas. He's written a book about it. And the results-based accountability approach takes a slightly different approach. It says there are long-term outcomes we're trying to achieve, and we, we know that, you know. But we don't have to keep measuring those all the time, every time we do something. We can have a way of tracking long-term outcomes, and that's, which is a separate process to evaluating programs. So we don't always expect that everything that's done 
can be linked immediately to those long-term outcomes. And I think in health we've often expected that to happen. So if we run a mass media campaign, for example, even if it's a one-off campaign, we measure the physical activity outcomes and we go, oh dear, nothing changed. Mm. But what we haven't done is we haven't theorised sufficiently well about, okay, what is, how is physical activity behaviour going to change? What are the various steps? We haven't used theory enough to explain the steps and then measure the um, outcomes that needed to occur in order for people to change their physical activity behaviour. And also completely unrealistic that we would run one campaign and expect, the, you know, that goes for six weeks or something and expect behaviour to change. So we've really done ourselves a disservice, I think, of always saying we've got to measure these long-term outcomes. In this results-based accountability approach, you don't have to measure those long-term outcomes all the time. As a government, they keep a track of it. They say, okay, we want, you know, reduce, um, you know, um, incarceration of youth or whatever it is. And then you track that through sort of monitoring information or, you know, population level data. And then you run your programs and then you try to show that the programs are actually achieving intermediate outcomes that have already got um, some kind of a link, you know, through other kind of research established. So, yeah, I think there's that sort of missing information in, in health that, you know, we just, we just do ourselves a disservice by always saying, oh, we must jump, do it, it didn't happen, you know. So I think we need to really delineate those intermediate outcomes a lot better and, and get better at collecting good information about it. It doesn't mean, you know, you don't collect good information about those outcomes. You can, and you can even do RCTs and collect that sort of information. Theorising helps not only the development of the intervention but the evaluation. Yeah. And I think that's really important in evaluation too is to think about what theories might help explain, even if the person who's developed the intervention you're evaluating hasn't worked that out. Um, you can, in, in working out a logic model, working out a theory of change, think what theories could help explain, whether it's behaviour change theory or, as I've talked about, organisational change theory, which is something that. I've been looking at in sort of from the business world, you know, they, they there are theories out there about, you know, how organisations change and, and how that can be achieved. And if we're trying to make changes in health promotion and public health and the way organisations are health promoting rather than the opposite, you know, then, you know, that's really helpful to actually understand um, how organisations change and apply that theory to looking at well, what did happen? And that can drive then sort of your methods and your questions. You know, the things you really need to find out um, can be sort of more easily um, decided if you've got a theory that, that's helping you make those decisions. We've been looking a bit at sort of complexity theory, but, you know, I find it, it's, it's quite challenging. Um, but definitely, um, and systems theory, um, definitely there are those looking at things in those sorts of ways I think are going to be helpful in the future. Exactly how, I can't tell at the moment, but I, I do think we need to have that. Two things occur to me. One is it's sort of the art and science of evaluation. So it's not, it isn't just a science actually. It's an art as well. And evaluation is about making assessments, about making judgments, and it's about using information to make arguments, make counter-arguments, dismiss possible scenarios and, and possible causal relationships, or prove possible causal relationships. But just getting back to this thing about causal relationships and contribution analysis, so that's where um, contribution analysis is saying, well, A doesn't always cause B. You know, that we live in a complex world, we've got people who live in communities, society, there are a lot of different factors. So it's about um, trying to say um, what contributed potentially to um, an outcome that, that, you're, that you're looking for and it, what's the degree of contribution, I guess, I mean, I haven't used it a lot yet, and I think Erica Wimbush knows a lot more about this um, than I do. But uh, I think it's a really promising way, and it does take account of that, that idea that things are complex, and certainly that we, we can't, in health promotion and public health, say A causes B, when we just know that's not true. And that's 
as you say, it's neat when you've got you know an RCT that shows you know well, here's the difference between the intervention and control group and yeah, but often it's on a narrow set of outcomes because that's the only way you can really do it. You know, you have to really narrow sort of the outcomes down, and then you say, well, how useful is it to know those two little bits of information? And also, there's a high risk with RCTs that you get an, a sort of a virtually null result. You know, it, it's sort of like, well, it could be, it couldn't be, it's a little bit, you know, this one's a little bit positive, this one didn't quite get significant, so what does that mean? And they go, I don't know, <laughs> what does it mean? I mean, it's not very helpful. And then if you do, uh, you know, these meta reviews that put all the RCTs together are even more useless, you know, because it just tells you nothing at all about what to do or how to, how to go forward. And I think I was giving you an example of um, somebody I know who, who was doing an RCT and at, at some stage along the way, it was a pub public health RCT, they decided that, oh, maybe we should do some interviews. We might just talk to the people, you know, as we go along. At the end of the day, they came up with this kind of null results in terms of you know whether it really was effective or not but the most interesting thing they learned were from the interviews they did with the program managers or whoever it was so you know I just hear that you know sort of often and I think it's about evaluation is about learning things it's about you know trying to gather information and and make judgments about things that will help us sort of gain knowledge and, and go to the next step and I think there's a lot of things we can do to get that knowledge and, and learn things that will help us decide what to do next. And I don't think RCTs and those sort of very narrowly focused really help that much often. I'm not saying it's not important, it's not useful, it is important to do those things, but it's also important to do um, other work that will give us different information that will be will help us make decisions, because that's what it's all about. It's about gathering information to decide what to do for, for, for the good you know, of the community. I think this, this whole thing about synthesising evidence is becoming a really big thing. Um, I don't know if you've heard about um, realist synthesis yet. So Ray Corson mm -hmm. is sort of um, talking about you know, how, how to sort of synthesise information. I mean, the t t type of method that he talks about is sort of long, drawn out and very complicated thing. But I think it looks to me like there's going to be um, more and more need and more and more demand for this drawing information from a number of evaluations together. And as we discussed earlier, um, part of that is about assessing the quality of those evaluations as well so that you know, you might sort of, some might not make the grade in terms of going into the pool of evaluations that, that you use. So there's a two-stage process of um, assessing the quality and then looking at the findings and seeing where they go. But I mean, I guess that assessing the quality thing is something that's interesting as well because, I mean, there's that, that risk that, you know, if you use the public health paradigm, research paradigm thing and say, oh, well, you know, will only include quasi-experimental evaluations or something. But there's a whole body of work um, being done by the education evaluation people in the US, and they developed um, what they call program evaluation standards. And you can actually buy the book, that's a SAGE publication, called Program Evaluation Standards. And that sets out um, a whole, a number of areas where you can assess the quality of evaluation, both from the planning stage, from the planning stage right through to the reporting stage, and we've used that a few times where we've been asked to sort of evaluate evaluations to the quality of, of evaluations and, and whether they've sort of met the needs. And part of it's about, you know, what was the purpose? You know, what what were the needs of the stakeholders for that evaluation? Did the evaluation actually meet the needs of those stakeholders? And there's all sorts of things about you know, how it's reported and, you know, well, how it's conducted and ethical, you know, was it conducted ethically? So there's a whole series of things that you can look at to say, well, how well is this evaluation really done? And it's really fantastic, actually.